This is an instructional tutorial for the installation of Trailtex S8313 High Output Electrical System. This will cover the 2007 through 2010 KTM 450, 525, and 530 EXC Racing, EXCR, and EXC Champions Edition. To start, remove the seat. To do so, locate the 8mm fastener under the rear fender. Once removed, lift and remove the seat. Remove the right and left side radiator shroud fasteners. Again, using your 8mm socket, remove these fasteners. To remove the right side, you will also need to remove the horn and horn bracket. To do so, disconnect the two spade terminals found behind the horn body and remove from the machine. Turning off the fuel on the petcock, we're now going to remove the fuel line, followed by removing the final 8mm fastener found under the seat, holding the tank to the frame rail. Lastly, remove the breather hose from the fuel cap as it's easier to remove here versus under the tank. Once removed, spread the radiator shrouds away from the radiator, releasing it from the machine, and lift it off. With the tank removed, locate the stock lighting connections. These will be identified as a single yellow wire with a spade terminal and a single white wire with a spade terminal. Disconnect these from the stock harness and stock stator, as well as the two pin blue ignition plug. To proceed, we will need to now drain the oil. Optionally, lay the bike on its side to prevent from having to drain the oil, as we will be opening the side case, exposing the oil cavities. If choosing to lay it on its side, optionally remove the skid plate by releasing the quarter turn fastener and removing the skid plate from the bottom of the machine. In addition, remove the shift lever, also using your 8mm socket to allow for an easier removal of the side case. With the shift lever out of the way, now remove your 8mm fasteners holding the side case to the side of the motor and remove the side case. Make note to remove it gently as the side case gasket is easily torn. It is highly recommended upon removal of the side case that you replace the gasket. If the gasket is removed and a new one is installed, take care to clean the surfaces of both the outer case and inner case prior to reinstallation. With the side case successfully removed, we are now going to remove the stock stator core. To do so, you will need to use your number 20 Torx bit to remove the fastener holding the wire guide to the inside of the side case. And an 8mm socket to remove the fasteners holding the cord to the inside of the side case. With these fasteners removed, we are going to use the case pushing from the side case and remove the stator core from the side case. Upon installation of the trail tech stator, you will have to remove a zip tie found on the wire guide. Note, failure to remove the zip tie will not allow the stator to seat properly in the side case. When installing this stator, it is also important to pay attention in what direction, making sure that the wire retainer is facing the position in the case in which the side case bushing will rest. Once installed, reinstall the 8mm fasteners, the wire guide, and Torx bit to hold the wire guide. For the Torx specifications for each of these fasteners, you can reference your service or repair manual for this machine. If the gasket has not become torn, you are now free to reinstall the side case opposite the removal process. If you are replacing the side case gasket, it is important to make sure that it is seated properly on the guide pins found opposite each other in the side case. With the side case now seated properly, tighten down all of the fasteners, again making note that the torque specifications for each of these can be found in your service repair manual. Reinstall the shift lever, again paying attention to the torque specification, as well as reinstalling the skid plate, making sure that the quarter turn fastener is locked. With these installed, you can now stand the machine upright. If you have chosen to drain the oil versus optionally laying the bike on its side, be sure to fill the oil back to the specified operating level prior to motor operation. Route the new trail tech stator leads opposite the removal process of the stock ones and refasten them with zip ties. 
Note, upon installing the zip ties, leave appropriate slack, allowing the wires to move freely. Install the provided Trail Tech jumper. To do so, we will have to remove the stock headlight, exposing the connector bracket on the face of the stock triple clamp. To do so, release the fork straps found on the right and left fork tube. You will also need a 6mm socket to remove the cable guide to disconnect the headlight from the stock wire harness. With the stock headlight removed, we are now going to locate the 2-pin switch DC power connection on the OEM connector bracket found on the face of the triple clamp. This can be identified as a 2-pin Molex connector containing one brown wire and one yellow wire with a red tracer. This step is particularly important. This step will provide switch DC power to all the lighting accessories and is a key important step in the installation of Trailtech's high output electrical system. Route the remaining red yellow wire with spade terminal down the left side of the motor following the stock wire harness. To do so we will take our 8mm socket loosening the fasteners holding the CDI to the frame and gently pry the CDI away from the frame allowing for appropriate distance behind it to route the new wire. Once routed, reinstall the CDI by simply tightening down the fasteners again paying attention to the torque specifications that can be found in your service repair manual. Locate the regulator rectifier again using the 8mm socket remove the stock regulator rectifier from the frame rail the regulator rectifier can be found directly in front of the ignition coil in the Y of the frame. Once removed, disconnect the stock 4-pin connector from the OEM regulator rectifier and remove it completely from the machine. Reinstall the Trailtech regulator rectifier opposite the removal process using the same 8mm fastener and reconnect the Trailtech white 4-pin connector into the stock 4-pin connector the OEM regulator was removed from. Note, the Trailtech regulator rectifier will be provided with two additional wires a pink wire with a spade terminal and a yellow wire with a male spade terminal. In this installation the pink wire will not be used. To seal this off use the provided 3 8 piece of shrink tubing and insert it over the spade terminal. Using the heat gun shrink tube this and seal it off. Locate the single yellow wire on the provided Trailtech regulator rectifier separate from the white 4 pin connector. Plug this in to either provided yellow on the new Trailtech stator. Locate the white wire in the factory wiring harness previously connected to the stock stator and connect it to the remaining yellow wire on the Trailtech stator. Locate the yellow with red tracer wire previously routed down the frame rail from the step before and connect this to the remaining yellow wire connection on the stock wiring harness. Lastly, locate the blue two pin ignition plug on the factory harness and connect it to the white ignition plug on the Trailtech stator. Route and bundle all wires cleanly under the tank, allowing for proper clearance of the fuel tank, and zip tie them up out of the way, again making sure to leave appropriate slack to not pinch or bind these wires. Reinstall the stock headlight opposite the removal process. With the stator and regulator now installed, we're going to reinstall the fuel tank. The fuel tank will reinstall opposite the removal process. Start by seating the fuel tank down on the frame rail, again ensuring that none of the wires have been caught or pinched with the fuel tank being reinstalled. Reinstall the fastener on the frame rail. Reinstall the breather hose onto the fuel cap. And reinstall both left and right side radiator shroud fasteners. Again making note that the right side radiator shroud also holds the bracket and horn body. Upon installation of the horn, you will need to reinstall the spade terminals we removed from earlier to the power and ground terminals on the back of the horn body. To finish this, we will install the fuel line and retainer back onto the petcock. Place the seat on the machine and reinstall the fastener found below the rear fender. You've now completed the installation of Trailtech's S8313 high output electrical system.